Hey everyone, it's Sarah Jane. Welcome back to my channel. You are about to watch an interview with Marie Rutkowski that I did with her at Yelp. There wasn't anywhere quiet to film a video, but in the end I set up the tripod anyway because I thought if I do the video in written form on my blog I'm still going to need something back to listen to. But as it turns out, because I also recorded the audio on my phone, if I placed the audio from my phone onto the footage of this interview and then ran it through a couple of programs, I could decrease the noise quite a bit. It's not great, but we were at a convention so we really did the best that we could do. I am so grateful to Marie for letting me interview her. It was an amazing experience. I'm also grateful to her publicist as well because she's just lovely. Before we get started with the interview, I just want to let you guys know that I am running a giveaway for signed copies of The Winner's Curse and The Winner's Crime. Both of these books have been signed by Marie. This giveaway is open internationally. It doesn't matter where you are, I will get the book to you. If you would like to win copies of these books, please check out the blog post that's been linked down below. I don't really want to explain all the rules in this video because I'd rather just get going straight into the interview, so let's go. Did you intentionally set out to create a character who didn't fit in a typical YA trope? Because Kestra is very strong. She's strong in a very unique way. Because in a lot of YA things, the female wants to be a warrior. Whereas her strength, while she is physically strong as well, her strength is very internal. And was that a conscious decision? Um, yes, actually it was. Um, I love books where a girl becomes a warrior. Yeah. One of my favorite books is Race Like by Christian for sure. That's on my TBR. Well, it should be. It's a wonderful book. <laughs> and uh, I, I love that um, the Katniss is so strong physically and also finds her strength emotionally and intellectually yeah. as well. Um, and I, and I do feel that there are many wonderful books out there and that they have They've been very influential on me. Uh, Robin McKinley's book, um, The Hero of the Crown. I it's, have a list that you it's, it's a classic. I'm going to go home and buy loads of books. <laughs> but I guess I felt like there, there wasn't, I hadn't really found a book that really prioritized um, a woman's intellectual strength. Yeah. Um, I can think of Megan Wayne Holmes' books, The Thief, where each entity is this incredibly. Yeah. And cunning, uh, just very sneaky. He's not just intelligent, he's also devious yeah. uh, sort of person, but he's also he's a young man. And it's, I'm, I'm hard pressed to think of books that um, are really about people's intellectual strength. Yeah. And, and spiritual strength as well. I mean, not yeah. Not spiritual in terms of religion, but just she has a great spirit. And yes, she does. She's very formidable um, in terms of. Her dedication. Yeah, I love that about her. It's one of my favorite protagonists. Kestrel's weakness is music. So, what would you say your biggest weakness is? Chocolate. <laughs> I like that. Cream. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> I think mine's probably chocolate and books. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What made you decide to create a fantasy world but without the magic? That's a good question. Um, when I started writing the initial draft, in the first few chapters, uh, there was magic, um, and I had it be that one of the reasons why the Valorians were able to conquer the Harani was um, that they had a kind of magical skill. Um, but then I felt like that was not true to the sort of story I was trying to write. Yeah. It also created an an artificial imbalance between two different groups of people yeah. that I thought was not how I wanted, I, it was not how I wanted it to be. And the more that I considered it, the more I realized that I wanted it to be a fantasy book in the sense that um, it's a new world, yeah. I, can, I can create, I can create different kinds of insects or um, uh, land masses or climate phenomena, like the brainstorm yeah. the first book, yeah. I, so that I can have that liberty, yeah. but in some ways the, the idea of having magic or magical creatures placed the burden that I didn't feel I needed on me, and it got in the way Yeah, the story. I, that actually makes perfect sense, because I guess it would have given the Valorians the extra 
extra power and they didn't need that to conquer yeah. them and if they'd had the magic it'd be like is that why they did it whereas it shows that they are so strong as they are is that I, yes I think you're right and I also think that if we consider the history of colonialism I mean in some ways it seems almost arbitrary as to yeah. why one group of people was able to conquer another yeah it's not that they are somehow superior people um at all. Yeah. It's just that certain circumstances made it such that they were able to take over an entire country and population. And it keeps it a very human story because they haven't got that advantage, I guess. That's really interesting. So we see Kestrel and Aaron forced together at the beginning of the Lewis Curse. Had they met under completely different circumstances, do you think there still would have been this pull between them? Yes, I do. Um, one of the things that I wanted to do in writing this book was to think about and have my readers think about how it is that great asymmetries of power can poison relationships. Yeah. Um, not just romantic relationships, but also relationships between friends. Yeah, yeah. Um, that when you have two people uh, who can have a lovely, warm, positive relationship, but for whatever reason, one is in a greater position of power over the other. Yeah. That that that, that difference um, is damaging. Yeah. And so I've I've always thought that um, the moment the moment the moment when Castro and Aaron can really be together, when the yeah. relationship can work, when people can have their happily ever after. Yeah. That we all desperately want. <laughs> So for that to happen, they need to be on equal footing. Yes. Um, and I do think that they are a perfect match for each other. I do. And it's really just circumstances that have made it such that uh, there are different types. Yeah, yeah, that's what I love about it. If we, if we got it too easy, then, you know, we wouldn't ship them so hard. And I do ship them very hard. <laughs> I love them together. I, yeah. I, I think that I care about, I care about my character. Yeah. Because they're amazing characters. Everyone will agree. <laughs> you said yesterday that the idea for the winner's curse came from the phrase the winner's curse. I didn't know that before yesterday. That to me was really interesting because from what I've heard, quite often authors have working titles and then the publisher will want to change it for marketing purposes. How was it like what was it like to create a story from a title rather than create a story? and then find a title. Was there any issues with publishing, like with the title that you had, or what was it like to create it, having the title first? Oh, uh, there were no issues regarding the title. Nobody ever asked me to change it. That's good. <laughs> um, I think that it was, uh, it was in some ways very um, wonderful. I wouldn't want to say it easy, but uh, the inspiration felt pretty direct, and it was almost as if something had been given to me. Yeah. Um, so I recommend it to would be writers, aspiring yeah. writers who are working on a project, to uh, be attentive and alive to special phrases. Yes. Because I think you can figure out why they interest you and you yeah. might have a story yeah. and the last question is could you give us a little hint of what's going to happen in the winner's kiss okay Does anyone? sure um, don't tease us <laughs> so let's see what I can tell you um one thing I can tell you is that you will see more of Aaron. Okay. Um, in the first book, you do get his perspective. Yeah. You only really get glimpses of what yeah. he's thinking. Um, and it's deliberate that way. In part because I felt like Aaron is so he's so angry and so bitter that he doesn't want to let anybody in and that yep. helps the reader. So the moments when you get a glimpse into his mind. I almost feel as if he's very unwilling. Yes. And so he wants to push you out as soon as you can come in. Yeah. And but in the second book we get much more of his perspective. Yeah. Um, and 
in some ways that's, that's nece- it was necessary for the way I wanted the plot to go. Yeah. Um, and in the third book, you get even more. So there's an increasing amount of his point of view. Yeah. So that by the third book, I feel that it's as much Aaron's story as it is Ashley's. Yeah. So I can say that. That's really interesting. Um, I was going to say, this kissing. Well, that's good because, you know, we do, like I said, we ship him so hard, <laughs> we're dying for it. <laughs> I'm so excited for it. I, I'm glad I got to read the first two books really close together, but now I have to wait like everybody else. But, oh, I'm so excited. But it will be out soon. Yeah. I mean, it comes out in the States in March. I don't know when it comes out in the UK. Maybe. It doesn't matter because I, I have ways. I will, order, have ways. I will order it from America to get it. That's how, that's how dedicated I am. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. And the last thing isn't a question, but something that me and a few of my fellow booktuber friends have realised is that there isn't that many YA books that focus on female friendships a lot. It's a lot of the time you have the girl meets the boy, and maybe she'll like have a friendship come from that in his circle, but quite often the girl is quite isolated. What I love about your story is that, of course, she has her best friend. And while there's obviously issues, <laughs> and very, very, very genuine deep issues, I have loved seeing their ups and downs as much as seeing the romance. And we don't get enough of that, so I just wanted to say that that's amazing. Well, thank you. And I, I mean, there are some wonderful... Um, Sarah Bessel's recent book, which is not fantasy. Yes. Um, say anything. Yes. I feel like the friendship in that book to me is even more potent yeah. and wonderful than the romance. Yeah. Um, that's what makes it book for me, the, the relationship between Sydney and Layla. Yeah. Um, but also, we both do those books. The Grisha. I know. They're wonderful. And yeah. they are they are so attentive to yeah. my relationships in a way that I love. Um, Renee Azia is the Wrath and the Dawn. Um, there too. Yeah. You see really um vibrant female friendships. Yep. Um also said that you hear is number in the ashes. That's also a mighty girl. <laughs> oh, you will enjoy it. And I think, I think I you will enjoy uh, the relationship that yeah. um that one of the main characters. Oh really? Exciting. Okay guys, so I hope you enjoyed that. I had an amazing time. Thank you so much for doing this video. Thank you, Thank you all. Made my day. And if you like it, please give it a thumbs up because I think, you know, we deserve a thumbs up. And I will see you all next time. Bye! Isn't it awesome? I'm still kind of in shock that it happened, to be honest. You guys know me. You've known me for like, what, a year now. You know that I have anxiety and I actually said to Marie that I'm really pleased that I did it because I have anxiety and she was quite surprised and she was like you don't you don't seem like you have anxiety and it was true because I wasn't anxious when I interviewed her at all in that moment I wasn't anxious I guess because I'd met her the day before and she'd been so lovely I just felt really really relaxed about the whole thing and it was just an amazing experience I feel so proud of myself that I managed to do it and it just makes me really, really happy because it was such a wonderful opportunity. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you next time. Bye. Also, don't forget to check out the giveaway.